Welcome back to another Porsche car whisperer video. Today is a super special day for me as we're going to be filming my favorite Porsche of all time, the 550 Spider. And today we're going to be discussing what is some of the history of the 550 Spider, what are some of the differences between a 550 Spider replica as this car is and the real thing, and who are some of the builders here in the United States that you can go to to have one of these built. So let's go ahead and get into it. So before we start talking about this beautiful 550, I want to take a moment to discuss something that I'm very, very proud of that I've been working on for quite some time. And that is called pcarwhisperer.com. And on there, you're going to find all my YouTube content as well as some new t-shirt designs that I've been working on with some designers for quite a while. I'm going to start off by releasing my 550 Spider t-shirt design as this is my favorite Porsche of all time. And I'm going to be releasing three new t-shirt designs every single month. So if you guys want to check it out, link's going to be down below. It's called pcarwhisperer. Com. Now, talking about this 550, this was Porsche's very first purposely built race car. Up until now, Porsche had only been racing 356 aluminum bodies all their races. That was starting in the late 1940s, 1948, 49, all the way up until the early 1950s, and Porsche decided if we're going to make a big push into racing, we need to build a car that's purposely built for racing. And that was the 550 or 1500 RS, as it was originally called. Well, why is it called the 550? Some think it may be called 550 because of its weight, but that's not necessarily true. This car weighs a little over 550 kilograms, but the true reason as to why it was called 550 is this was Porsche's 550th design. So as Porsche kind of goes through all of its designs, it has numbers that are associated with it, very similar to 991, 992, it's the exact same thing. Now with 1500, that actually stood for the engine size of the 550. It was a 1.5 liter, originally souped up Volkswagen motor for the first couple chassis. And then Porsche decided, you know what, we need to have a little bit more of a more powerful engine. And they had one of their designers, Ernst Fuhrmann, actually design something that we now call the four cam motor or quad cam motor, which was quite the engine. So that was a 1.5 liter, four cam, 110 horsepower motor. And that actually absolutely dominated all of the competition. Now with RS, it's exactly the same thing as we have today. RS stands for Rent Sport or Racing Sport, and this car is no different. So with a little bit of this history, Porsche actually built 90 chassis of the original 550 Spyder. And as you can imagine, those today are very, very expensive. But back in 1955, the list price of the 550 was only $6,800, which to me is mind-blowing, as now these cars are going for millions and millions of dollars. But that makes it kind of tough to afford one of these, especially as a lot of these have a lot of racing pedigree. Porsche over the 1953 to 1965 ish era went into about 370 different races. It won 90 times overall and placed about 75 overall class wins, which is mind blowing because as small as it is, you can see how short it is standing next to me. And as light as it is, this car beat a lot of the bigger competition that had more power and more muscle. A lot of times came out on top. That's one of the reasons that James Dean, the famous actor, on the back of his car, it said Little Bastard. And that's why this car got that nickname, Little Bastard, is it's so, so small and so light, underpowered compared to a lot of the other cars, but it outbeat the competition tremendously. And this really helped establish Porsche as a racing powerhouse was the 550. So let's go ahead and talk about what are some of the differences that we're gonna find between a replica, as this car is, and the real thing. And we're actually gonna go ahead and start right off on the front. So I'll see you guys there in a moment. All right, so let's go ahead and start off here on the front of this replica 550 and talk about what is one of the easiest ways you can tell between a replica and the real thing. Well, one of the easiest ways is to tell the replicas are made out of fiberglass. Now this doesn't account for all of the replicas. Some of them are also made out of aluminum just as the real ones are. But we'll talk about some of those builders a little bit later in this video. But the reason that these builders are making them out of fiberglass is to really help keep the weight down. Original 550 was about 1,300 pounds, which is nuts to think about. And that is so, so light when you compare the standard SUV is at least 5,000 up to 6,000 pounds today. So it weighs a lot, lot more. But again, the reason that they're doing it is to really help keep the weight down. Now, a really cool fact of Porsche history is not all the 550s had this little, these little scoops up here in the front. But what was the reason? Well, starting with chassis 46, Porsche started adding these scoops. All the previous chassis did not have these scoops. Porsche had found that if they didn't add these scoops, that the front drum brakes were starting to overheat. 
And we all know that's not a good thing. That's gonna hurt our lap times and potentially hurt us being able to get a win at Nuremberg Ring, Le Mans, and so forth. So they put these front scoops to help the air come through and cool those front brakes and it helped tremendously. Now, 45 chassis all the way down to number one. Some of those have also been retrofitted since then and now have this scoop. If it doesn't, it's gonna have a little rubber bumper strip in the very, very front of the car. So you'll be able to tell if it's a really early original 550 if it has that bumper strip when you're looking at it. That's not, of course, the only way to tell if it is the real thing or not, but that's the way to tell if it's before or pre-chassis number 46, which I find so cool. Now, we also have this faux oil cooler grill here on the front of this replica 550. The real thing actually had the real grill here to help cool uh, the engine, of course. So just one of the quick, easy differences. This car has the original Porsche script, just as the real things did. And also most of them had the little Porsche crest right up above that Porsche script as well. Now these headlights are pretty much from the Volkswagens of the time. This car has the clear headlight lenses. Most of them have something called the fluted headlight lens, which actually has lines in it. And that helps keep the lights brighter when you're driving at night. So keep an eye out for that. And then of course we have the turn signals here and the historic Porsche scoops here on the very front. You can tell when you're driving the car that you have these humps and it makes it look very Porsche-esque. Now something that's so cool about the 550 is we have the gas cap right here in the front trunk because that's where the gas tank actually is and that's where you can fill it and it helps to fill the car faster when you're at the racetrack and I think it looks so cool and we're still using it up till today of course with the Porsche RSR you can fill it right in the very front trunk and I find that super cool let's go and hop to the side and talk about what are some of the differences that you're going to find between the replica as well as the real thing so I want to start off here with this really cool spider script, but where did this actually come from? Well, it was a suggestion from the U.S. importer at the time, and his name was Max Hoffman. He thought that if the car was going to be a little bit more desirable, we should add a name associated with it instead of either just 550 or 1500 RS. So he said, you know what, let's call it the Spider. I think it's so, so cool because we're still using the Spider today where you've got the 918 Spider, 718 Spider, and the Boxster Spider. So I think that's very cool that this name is still was originated here with the 550 and it still be used today. Okay, so starting off here with the wheels. Most of the replicas here in the United States, whether it be vintage motor cars out of Hawaiian Gardens, which this particular car is, or if it's a Beck Spider, they're gonna have these 15 inch wheels where the originals actually had 16 inch wheels with bias ply tires, which are these really old school kind of tires where this car has more of a modern tire. It actually has a Yokohama Advin Touring S tire on it. Now this, and most of the replicas are gonna have front disc brakes, which actually help the car, I would imagine, quite a bit, as I've never had a chance to drive a real one. But I like disc brakes over drum brakes, as the drum brakes, of course, don't have quite as good of stopping power. But this, you can't tell, because it has something called a drum skin that actually covers that disc brake, and it makes it look just like the original drums that were on the car, which I think is so cool. We've got this GT side, side mirror. Not all the cars are gonna have this. Some of the originals will have it, some of the replicas will have it. I just think it looks really cool here on the side. And then up here on the hood, we have these latch covers. These are faux latch covers on the replicas, whether it be Beck or vintage motor cars. On the real ones, it's actually uh, where we can open up the front hood and it has something called the church key where it actually gets inserted and twisted and then you can open up the front uh, hood. So that's another big, big difference between a replica and a real one as this is more of a faux uh, latch cover key. Now, coming here to the, to the windshield. The windshield is actually come from a speedster of the time windshield but the original had a short little plexiglass windshield that was probably about three quarters the height of this and went all the way across or it just went right over uh, the windshield or the main driver. So that's another quick and easy way to tell. Now some of the owners of these cars may have upgraded and actually put that original plexiglass windshield, which I think looks really, really cool. But this particular one has the Speedster one from the time. Now let's go ahead and hop to the back of the car and talk what are some of the differences we're gonna find between the real as well as some of these replicas. Now what I find very interesting about this car is of course this one also has disc brakes in the rear. Some of the early back spiders did not, but pretty much all of the vintage motor cars replica spiders have the disc brakes here in the back and of course we have that drum skin in the back of this one the originals had drums all the way around uh, that would look just like this but again not quite as good of stopping power something i find interesting about this car is it actually has these little scoops here as well as the helmet fairing 
that was more of a 550A kind of thing. So this car is almost a mix between a 550A and a 550 as the taillights in the front um, and the, pretty much the inside of the car looks very 550. But this little scoops here and this helmet fairing were 550A. On the 550A, this would actually be able to open up and you'd be able to do maybe a quick carb adjustment on the car just in case something happened during the middle of the race, these would just pop right open. So that was a little bit of a change from 550 to 550A. But again, this car is kind of a mix between A as well as the original 550. Now let's go ahead and hop and look at the back of the car and then talk about the motor. So while we're here in the back of this 550, I wanna take a moment to talk about this grill here. And this car has what we call a twin grill, which a lot of the 356s later on had this and the 550 kind of started it. So we've got two grills, but not all of them are gonna have this either. So there was actually a really cool video that was, that was produced about a year ago where chassis number 69 was found in a barn here in Orange County. And that car actually has four grills. So we've got two here, and then we also have two more here on the side. So go ahead and check it out. I'm actually gonna leave the link down below, but that's just another kind of way to tell um, some of the differences between each 550 model, not necessarily a replica and the real thing, but some of them may have different grill placements as again, not two 550s are gonna be exactly the same, which is so, so cool. Now, let's talk a little bit about the colors. So this car is more in a, like a darker kind of volcano gray. This wasn't an original color. Most of the 550s, or pretty much all of them, either came in silver, there was red, yellow, and then we also had a French blue, which was a really, really pretty blue color as well. So those were the main colors. And most of the colors on the inside was either tan, blue, or red. Didn't see too many other colors of the interior either. Now you'll see here, there's these, what we call kind of racing stripes here on the back of the rear fenders. Now, why do they have this? Well, this was actually, so when the guys were racing and most of them and pretty much all of the works cars were silver, they would have a different tail spear in the back. So you'd be able to tell which driver it is. So as they go by, it could be a silver 550 with a blue tail spear. You'll know which driver that is. Maybe it was Hans Hermann. There was another 550 that went by, had red tail spears. You would know that that was a, a, a different driver. So that's what's really, really cool. Another cool piece of history here on the 550s about these tail spears that they either had uh, a lot of different colors. It could have been green, red, blue, an array of colors that were found. But I wanted to talk about some of the colors that you could find here on the 550, especially the originals. So you know if it's not any of those colors, probably is not gonna be an original 550. Now, this particular car was detailed by a place called Wicked Auto Detailing, and they're here in Orange County, and they did a fantastic job. The owner took it there and actually had a graphene coating put on it, and it's very similar to a ceramic coating and makes it feel like glass. So go ahead and check out their link as it will be down below, Wicked Auto Detailing. They did a great, great job at detailing this particular 550 as I'm looking at it, and it looks just like glass. So. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the motor and we'll see you guys there. So besides the fiberglass body, this is the biggest difference you're going to find between a replica 550 and the real thing. The real thing had what we call a 1.5 liter four cam engine that had about 110 horsepower that was specifically designed for racing by a man by the name of Ernst Fuhrmann. This car is completely different. It still has a four cylinder motor, but it's actually out of a Volkswagen and has a 2.3 liter Volkswagen motor that has about 160 horsepower. So let me tell you, this thing absolutely rips and is actually faster than the original 550s were just because of the power to weight ratio compared to this car compared to that original 550. Now let's talk about this particular car. This has a lot of really, really nice upgrades that came from a place that's called Fiber Steel. And if you ask me, I had a chance to speak with Nick and Russ over at Fiber Steel, and these guys are top notch, and these, they know these cars like the back of their hand. They did a lot of upgrades to this car that include a gas prop rod kit that allows you to just be able to move the back like this instead of it flying all the way back. So there's these gas prop rods that are down here. They added this spare tire along with a really nice leather strap. They actually had to re relocate this crossbar here so that we could fit the spare tire in there. And they did a lot of other upgrades in, in terms of tuning and also changing the carburetor. So the original carburetors on this car were a 40 either Solex or Weber carburetor. This particular car and the owner of this car has these at 44 Weber carburetors. So these are a lot bigger than the original. 
Something else that Fiber Steel did is they added this fire suppression system here in the back of the car, which is really cool. So if the car catches on fire, this instantly explodes and helps to take down that fire. So I would highly, highly recommend checking out Nick and Russ at Fiber Steel as these guys are top notch and they know these cars like at the back of their hand. Now it's said that here sometime in the near future, they're gonna be making their own 550 of their own. So definitely be checking them out. I'll leave their link down below, fibersteel.com. They have a really cool uh, aluminum 550 of their own that, like they said, hopefully they're gonna start building here sometime in the near future. But for now, the main builders of these cars is Beck as well as Vintage Motor Cars. And there's also another company that is out of Connecticut that's called Spider Creations. Now, that's a complete aluminum 550. It's actually tooled off one of the very last 550s uh, that was ever made, chassis number 90. And you can actually get a four cam motor out of that car. So that is the closest thing that's on the market to getting a real 550 Spider, and that's made by Spider Creations. And you can actually race those in some of the historic races as well. So I'll leave their link down below as well, called Spider Creations. And I'll also leave Beck Spider, as well as Vintage Spiders, uh, their link down below as well. It said that there's at least a two year wait on Vintage Motor Cars 550s and up to three years on Beck Spider. So there's quite a wait to get these cars and the values just keep going up. You're gonna find one between 50 to 75 grand depending on all of the different options that are on the particular cars. But if you want one to be built exactly like you'd like it, go ahead and check out uh, both of their websites down below. Now let's go and hop to the inside and talk about what are some of the differences we're gonna find on the 550 on the inside. 550, you're gonna notice quite a few differences between a replica and potentially the real thing. This car has a bunch of German weave carpet on the inside. Originals just pretty much had an aluminum floor plan and had no carpet, which is pretty crazy. The seats were pretty much made out of vinyl. There's two different types of vinyl uh, that you can find on an original 550, or they were just the aluminum seat uh, where it was just completely bare, and that would not be very comfortable. You got these seat belts. Originals did not have seat belts, so a lot of the drivers maybe got thrown out of the car as they're driving. It's just crazy to think about a car not even having seat belts nowadays. The shifter was a little bit different in the original 550. So on this guy, we have it, the shifter on the left and the emergency brake on the right. On the original, it was actually flipped. Emergency brake was first, the shifter was on the right, and there was a little gate that you'd have to lift up to put the car over in to reverse. So another kind of quick and easy way to tell. This car has the original banjo steering wheel, which I think looks so cool. And it has the original Porsche horn button and the turn signal that pretty much all looks very original, but these gauges are a lot different. So when you can order the car from vintage motor cars, they have these kind of new school, old school looking gauges. And that's what this car has. And it's actually based off of GPS that they look old, but they have a lot better functionality and they're a lot more accurate than the original video gauges that you would find with the original 550s. So if you have a Beck Spider or a Vintage Spider, check out again, Vintage Motor Cars, go to the parts section and you can go and take a look and try to find these gauges and potentially add them to your 550. I think it's a great addition to any of those cars. The, the, as we know, most Porsches have the ignition here on the left side. The 550 has it here on the right side. You would just turn this over. This was a series of fuel pumps here on the original 550s, and then you would just press and start with a push button start, which is pretty cool, because not many Porsches even have that nowadays, with the exception of the Taycan. And then down here on the driver's side kind of footwell, on the originals, we have something called these Auto Pulse fuel pumps, which there's, there are two different fuel pumps. They weren't very reliable though. If there was any dirty fuel that got in them, they would fail. So a lot of the cars now, they just have those more for show. And the originals may have even had those changed in the back of the new 550s. So just those are kind of some quick and easy ways to tell if you're looking at an original or if you're looking at a replica just by going here on the inside. But enough talking about this car, let's take it for a spin. So here we go. You guys might have a, a little bit of trouble hearing me. The maiden voyage in this 550. It's just so cool because it like brings you back to a time when the cars were way different. I mean, back in the 1950s, these guys were crazy. This particular car has some seat belts, uh, but back in the day, the cars didn't have any seat belts. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, the uh, owner actually gave me his helmet so I can wear it 
as I'm driving this car. Partially because this car is just so low and nobody really sees you. So you have to be very, very careful when you're driving it. But I can already tell you, it feels very, very smooth. I love the simplicity in the inside of these cars. Uh, again, it throws you back to a time. On this guy, you're gonna see a couple different knobs. On the original cars, there would be a series of fuel pumps you would turn on. On this guy, there's wipers as well as the lights. So a little bit different than how it was on the real 550s. I don't know about you, this car sounds pretty good. I love the sound. I love the way it feels. It just feels like old school, but it, again, it feels really, really smooth. Just like I was talking about earlier, with that Bilstein suspension, the car feels a lot smoother than I would imagine it how it would have. But again, this is a replica, so an original may feel a little bit more rough around the edges. And it will definitely have a little bit less power than this guy. And overall, the seats on this guy, they're really, they're actually pretty comfortable. These are like the sports seats from back in the day. This has, has padding. Now, the originals didn't have really any padding in the seats. You were pretty much just sitting on like a, uh, a hard seat. Uh, so that feels a little bit different. Steering wheel, just like it was in the original, this one has a banjo steering wheel. Some of them had like a wood steering wheel as well. Uh, but the steering feels somewhat loosey, but that's kind of how the cars of the time were. Uh, just love the way the car feels. I'm gonna get on it again. fast it feels awesome I can smell the engine a little downshift there I love seeing these humps that's very Porsche-esque Taycan has that uh, so it just it just feels so cool driving this car and I'm so glad that I have that I have the chance to be able to drive one even though again like I said it is a replica but it feels so cool and it just takes you back to a period of time. And this is kind of where it all started. So this really helps you appreciate the cars up today. Because the cars today, they came from this car. So just so, so cool. And I love the way it drives. Of course, no power steering. So going around that little corner, you can really have to really kind of put your muscle into it. Good thing I've been going to the gym. <laughs> So thankful that I've been able to drive this car today and uh, finally be able to launch pcarwhisperer.com. Again, if you guys want to check it out, help support the channel a little bit, uh, if you want to check it out, the link will be down in the description below. If you guys have any questions about 550s, uh, replicas, real questions, I would highly recommend checking out type550.com. That's a very, very good resource. Has a lot of good tight, uh, 550 information on it. And again, you can always ask me uh, any questions about any of the cars or about 550s as well, as this is my favorite Porsche of all time. I could probably answer quite a few questions, but if I can't, maybe you can find them on Type 550 or I could try to find the answers. It's a little bit harder to find answers on these older cars. Uh, but as always, appreciate you guys watching these videos. Hope you guys have an amazing day. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching.